next on AM 1480 WLEA, The Newsmaker Show. Here's Ryan O'Neill. Well, it's Wednesday, and today we have on uh, Alfred State History Professor Dr. Nick Wani. Dr. Wani, as always, thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me, Brian. Well, Dr. Wani, um, I wanted to start out with the uh, Lanny Davis situation. Now, from what I understand, I'm getting this from uh, the Daily Wire. Michael Cohen's lawyer, Lanny Davis, admitted he was the anonymous source for a widely criticized CNN report that claimed that Michael Cohen was willing to tell Special Counsel, Special Counsel Robert Mueller that the president knew in advance about the Trump Tower meeting where the Russians were expected to give dirt on Hillary Clinton. Lanny Davis told Anderson Cooper recently that Cohen does not have any information that Trump knew about the meeting in advance. And Davis told BuzzFeed a couple days ago that he was the source for the uh, CNN July 26th report about the uh, Russian meeting and President Trump, which contradictory story there. Uh, conflicting information from the same source. Lanny Davis insisted he did not lie, but claims that he unintentionally misspoke and made a mistake. Dr. Wadi, you want to weigh in on this? Sure. I, I have two principal thoughts, and one is that there was absolutely nothing illegal or improper about the Trump Tower meeting to begin with. Uh, any campaign offered the opportunity to gain potentially damaging information about its opponent will take an interest in that and that's just not a crime um the clinton campaign paid as far as we can tell um, indirectly of course russian intelligence agents for damaging even false damaging information on president trump no one is pursuing a criminal probe against the clinton campaign or the dnc um, so as far as I know, there's no underlying crime here to begin with. But the other thought that I would have is that um, this is just more sloppy reporting. You know, CNN is, is single-mindedly dedicated to taking down the Trump administration. And they will jump all over any story that makes Trump look bad. And clearly their, their fact-checking is wanting. And unfortunately, that's, that's a theme in American journalism these days. Uh, People run with stories, uh, even if they turn out to be false. And you, 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 the way you know that's the case is so many stories these days, it'll say report, colon, blah, blah, blah. What that means is they, they didn't bother to fact check it. All they know is that somebody claimed something and they want to get it out there to, to get eyes on it and to generate some advertising revenue and some buzz. And, whether they and possibly because they want uh, Trump to resign? Well, um, whether they want him to resign, whether they want him to be impeached, uh, whether they want him to be run out of town by a mob with pitchforks, I, I'm not sure what they want, but I think above all they want to do damage to him. Uh, I, they're probably not arrogant enough to believe that they by themselves can determine his fate, but um, you know, they have a soapbox and they're using it, and, and they're using it shamelessly to try to destroy you know, what's what's really sad is that they're, they're really not just destroying Trump personally. They're doing damage to American democracy and to the presidency itself. Um, they're undermining confidence in our government. And that is uh, something we should take seriously. Dr. Wadi, here's what uh, Senator Lindsey Graham said about the situation with Lanny Davis. Word of caution to the public. A lot of people have tried to convict President Trump. Don't be so fast. I've seen no evidence of collusion after two years. Mueller's looking at it. We'll see what he says. Plenty of corruption in the Department of Justice and the FBI should be stunning. Not one Democrat seems to care. Reverse the roles. What, what corruption? <laughs> what do you mean? Well, okay, just imagine if the Republican Party had ha uh, hired a foreign agent to go to Russia to get dirt on Hillary Clinton, and they used it to get a warrant and never told the court about it. Uh, it'd be front page story everywhere. Dr. Wadi. He couldn't be more right. I mean, the revelations about what went on uh, in the Obama administration and the DNC and the Clinton campaign and the skullduggery they engaged in to, to gin up this, this Russia conspiracy theory about Trump. I mean, it's, it's really shocking and disgusting. And the fact that the media doesn't care about any of that but, but only wants to 
to use innuendo to try to undermine Trump. It's it's amazing. It, it truly is. I, I couldn't agree more with Lindsey Graham. You know, Tucker Carlson said something, oh, maybe six months ago on his uh, nightly TV show. He said a lot of these reporters uh, in Washington, D.C., in the Beltway are inexperienced reporters. They didn't uh, make their way to Washington after working other places first. That they were hired... Uh, pretty quickly out of college and that they were sociology majors not journalists I'm not knocking the field of uh, sociology but uh, it seems that uh, if, if Tucker's right on that that would be very telling about the media and uh, because it really it has gotten worse than it was before yeah I think you're right the professional standards have declined but I guess to be fair to these journalists, the pressures on them are different than they used to be. You know, the news cycle is really fast and they're supposed to get out there with hard hitting stories and and fact checking takes time. It it slows down the whole process. So you can understand why they skip some of those important steps. But um, it's sad. Um, And there's there doesn't seem to be any question that a lot of these reporters are coming into the profession with an ideological motivation and an ideological objective. And it's it's not all about reporting the facts changing the world yeah uh you know a lot of times the problem uh i would say with uh reporters before this point uh, it wasn't so much changing the world as uh wanting to jump ship and using their media jobs to get to uh uh using it as a stepping stone sucking up to a source and then getting a job with the source but uh, now it's just out and out advocacy journalism uh, and ideological. Speaking of uh, Tucker Carlson, which is how this whole part of this conversation got started, we were talking about Tucker Carlson saying that the uh, the journalists in Washington, D.C. and the White House uh, covering Washington, not necessarily all the White House press corps, but uh, were uh, sociology majors and not journalism majors. Tucker Carlson had an interesting take on... Uh, the the uh, media coverage of President Trump and uh, the way that uh, President Trump uh, uh, reacted to the death of uh, Senator John McCain. And basically what Tucker said is that it's kind of scary that the media is dictating how a person is supposed to react. Actually, you know, to be honest, for President Trump, you know, normally he gets on tweet and makes a lot of critical comments. He didn't do that uh, in the case of the death of uh, Senator McCain. Uh, the complaint was made that the flag was taken down uh, from the half-staff uh, position there at the White House too soon and that uh, Trump didn't say enough about uh, his longtime uh, nemesis, enough good things about his longtime nemesis, Senator John McCain. <laughs> Did you have any thoughts on this situation, Dr. Waddy? No, I guess my principal thought is the politics of grief have always disgusted me on a certain level. I mean, the, when people begin to exploit uh, things like funerals and, and tragedies uh, for political gain and, and to criticize a political opponent, it's it's really unseemly. Um, President Trump is in a difficult position because he was critical of John McCain and John McCain was critical of him. Everybody respects John McCain as a patriot and as a public servant, but um, I happen to agree with President Trump that that John McCain wasn't perfect, he wasn't infallible, and and, uh, criticizing him was uh, um, appropriate. Well, Tucker Carlson went as far as to show uh, media, uh, old media clips of uh, politicians and reporters and anchors coming out against McCain when McCain was running for president, when the left was calling McCain a racist, and then all of a sudden they forgot that and went back to McCain as a hero again. Right. Well, what the left has always liked about McCain is that he's willing to turn on his fellow Republicans, and and, and the left and the media love that. Uh, any Anything that uh, creates an impression of acrimony within the Republican Party or the conservative movement is something that they love to play up. Unfortunately, John McCain fed that storyline on many occasions, and I guess he saw that as evidence of his broad-mindedness, and uh, so be it. But... Um, I, th- I think that's why they're fond of John McCain, because he was willing to turn on, on his allies. 
We're talking with Alfred State History Professor Dr. Nick Wadi. Uh, we're going to take a quick break, check the weather when we come back. We'll talk about uh, Paul Manafort and an interesting race down in North Carolina. Stay with us. Football season is here. Listen live as we broadcast for now Red Raiders football. Starting Friday, August 31st, and every Friday night, starting at 7.30 p.m., you can catch all the Hornell High School action. Listen live on AM 1480 WLEA. Hear the game on WLEA.net or listen live on your mobile device by downloading the Littletown Living app for free. Don't miss a single Hornell Red Raider game. Thanks for listening to Hornell Red Raider football live on AM 1480 WLEA and WLEA.net. Those markers are set. There's four huge to go here. Down by throws it now in the shotgun formation. And that'll be good for another Red Raider touchdown. Checking in with meteorologist uh, Rob Carolyn, and not to be cliche, Rob, but are you the one who ordered the heat? I did, Brian, because I know what happens in the season of fall. It precedes winter, and that's a bad thing. I don't want uh, the summer to come to an end, uh, but it will come to an end uh, by this time next week, Brian. We're going to be talking about some fall-like weather developing across the region for next Friday and the weekend. Models are suggesting quite the uh, air mass coming out of central Canada towards us, but right now, our weather's dominated from uh, the Gulf Coast to northern New England by southwesterly winds that have been bringing unusually warm and humid air northward. There's a cold front producing showers and thunderstorms right now from Oklahoma across Missouri and on up into Illinois and Michigan. Uh, some of those storms are fairly strong and they'll continue to work their way off towards the north and east, slowly working east and eventually getting into our area. There is the potential for some showers and storms before our day is done. We'll be looking at temperatures today up to about 85 to 90. Heat advisory in effect through 8 p.m. It looks like uh, showers and storms will become a little bit more widespread tonight. Lows are going to drop down to about, uh, I'd say, 65. Tomorrow, the showers will end in the morning. Looks like it's going to be mostly cloudy through the afternoon. High temperatures are going to be up to about 70 to 75, so we're certainly going to be on the cooler side of the front tomorrow. It becomes partly cloudy, much more comfortable tomorrow night. Lows will drop down to 50 to 55. Nice day Friday, sunny, much less humid, 75 to 80. More sunshine Saturday before we run the risk of a few showers on Sunday, Brian. Back on Newsmaker Show, it's Brian O'Neill on today with uh, Alfred State History Professor Dr. Nick Waddy. Dr. Waddy, Paul Manafort. Uh, did you have any thoughts on his situation? Well, my thought has been for a long time that the case that uh, uh, federal prosecutors were pursuing and have now gained some convictions on vis-a-vis -vis Paul Manafort was fairly irrelevant to President Trump and the fate of his administration. Paul Manafort appears to have evaded paying his taxes. That's something that, unfortunately, tens of millions of Americans do. He, if he is guilty of that crime, should certainly be punished for it. But, um, you know, it certainly seems as though these prosecutions are being pursued to put maximum pressure on people who they hope will turn on President Trump. Um, and there's no evidence that, that Paul Manafort knows of any crimes that President Trump committed or that he has any inclination to tell Robert Mueller about them. But... Uh, um, so, you know, it's, it's unfortunate that President Trump chose as his, as the chairman of his, uh, campaign, someone like Paul Manafort, if he is indeed a criminal, but it doesn't, it doesn't ultimately, um, have anything to do with the, uh, law abidingness of President Trump himself. And I think it will be ultimately irrelevant to, uh, to impeachment and, and all the, lines of inquiry that are being pursued against Trump. Moving on to that uh, North Carolina district that's in question, what do we know about that, Dr. Wadi? Well, basically what happened uh, uh, yesterday uh, is that um, a three-judge panel, uh, federal, ju federal judges, decided that uh, the uh, congressional districts in the state of North Carolina are unconstitutional. This is a problem because we have a congressional election coming up very soon, and they are proposing some pretty extreme remedies for fixing this problem, including possibly delaying the election of the congressional delegation in North Carolina. This is, uh, I think, 13 um, congressmen. 
And basically what happened is Republicans control the, the state legislature and they used to control the governorship in North Carolina. They drew districts that were favorable to Republicans. The Republicans have a nice big edge in that congressional delegation and these judges don't like it. So what I, what I would like to say is that I believe that this kind of judicial activism is as much a threat to American democracy as the Russians have ever been and that is because state and the federal constitution uh, clearly indicate that the drawing of congressional districts is a legislative responsibility, not a judicial responsibility. More and more judges are taking it upon themselves to intervene in elections and in drawing these districts. And very, very often they're doing so with a, a liberal or a democratic bias. And uh, that's something that we need to be concerned about. And above all, we need to get uh, Brett Kavanaugh on the Supreme Court ASAP so they can try to uh, put a stop to this. Do you think that'll happen? Do you think Kavanaugh will get on the Supreme Court soon? I don't see any sign that the Democrats are, are being successful in blocking him. All their uh, attacks against him seem to go nowhere. A lot of Democratic senators are being coy. They're not saying they're not coming out against him. So I think the chances of his nomination being blocked are, I would say, below 10%. He's a European history professor at Alfred State College, Dr. Nicholas Wani. Uh, wanted to get your thoughts on the biggest story in Europe right now, if not one of the biggest stories in the world. Pope Francis. Uh, it was uh, late Saturday, early Sunday, that an archbishop in Italy, Archbishop Vignano, put out a letter saying that Pope Francis knew about uh, Cardinal Theodore McCarrick and that uh, Uncle Teddy, as he was uh, called, uh, apparently by victims too, uh, this Uncle Teddy, uh, Cardinal McCarrick, uh, the, the, the Pope was accused of knowing and covering up and then putting uh, Cardinal McCarrick uh, back into power after Pope Benedict had uh, removed uh, Cardinal McCarrick from power. And this letter from Archbishop Vignano, it, it's a huge accusation against the Pope. Now, they already have a situation where there's... Uh, uh, Pope Emeritus, Pope Benedict resigned. Pope Francis comes along. Now Pope Francis is, is being pressured to resign. Uh, they've had anti-Pope situations uh, in, in European history. This is a little bit unique, though. It is, yeah. Um, I mean, we've seen these stories about the Catholic Church for, I suppose, over a decade now. Um, they're certainly sad. Um uh, you know, I think what we're seeing in the Catholic Church is to some degree what we're seeing in American politics and business and in Hollywood. It's the weaponization of these charges of, uh, of misconduct. And my position with respect to the Catholic Church or any other institution would be that um, what you really need to do is, is get to the bottom of, of these cases and, and find out what truly happened and, and what what wrongdoing actually took place and no one should be tried in the media you know uh, the mere fact that someone wrote a letter doesn't doesn't prove any misconduct by Pope Francis so uh, the verdict is out and I, I just hope that in all these cases people suspend judgment and they let the process unfold uh, as it should yeah this is uh, I can't say it's a nail in the coffin of Pope Francis's papacy but it's a big problem uh, he's he's uh, undergone uh, similar uh, accusations about uh, clergy in uh, South America where Pope Francis is from and then on the Pope's recent visit to uh, Ireland uh, there was a lot of uh, angry ex uh, altar boys there in Ireland uh, hollering and shouting from the crowds. Uh, if the Pope had to step down, uh, do you have any thoughts or predictions on what would what would happen to Pope Francis and what would life be like for the next Pope? <laughs> well, you know, I'm not an expert on the Catholic Church, but all I can say is that I have a lot of respect for it. And it's an institution that in one form or another has persisted for 2,000 years, and that is, that is a pretty incredible achievement. It has the ability to 
in some ways it's a very conservative organization, but it has the ability to adapt to changing circumstances. It's done it many times in the past. And the Catholic Church is much bigger than the Pope. And uh, it's going to survive and it's going to prosper. And uh, I think to a large degree it has dealt with this problem of, of priests abusing their their position to take advantage of, of, uh, of children. And um, I, I'm, I'm certain that they take this problem very seriously now. They have a history of covering it up, and that's, that's bad. But, uh, but at some point, uh, we need to move on and, and acknowledge that, that they have made progress. We've been talking to uh, Alfred State uh, history professor, Dr. Nick Waddy. Dr. Waddy, was there any topics I did not bring up that you want to cover? I don't think so, Brian. You hit everything. All right, then uh, we'll call it a show. i got to thank you so much for joining us once again, Dr. Wadi. Thank you, Brian, and have a wonderful week.